The thing that stinks about recording on here, you can't see if people are watching or not when you do it on your computer. All right. As usual, I have no clue if this is working. I am going to report my uh, report. I always say report. I'm telling you, I got, I must have had a stroke or something a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can hardly talk. As always, I'm um, keeping the Captain Morgan's people employed. A little white, white Captain Morgan's rum. Not normally the type of captains I drink, but I got it for a gift uh, for Christmas from Miss Annie. So I'm going to be drinking it. All right. I'm going to start the podcast. we got plenty to talk about. Obviously, coronavirus stuff. But the most important thing I want to talk about, again, is social distancing and all the crap that I'm taking because I'm working. And now the White House is coming out and saying where the number one place is, you will get the virus. Are you leaving? All right. Well, I'm going to start recording the podcast. Kaylee was going to be on the podcast, but she bounced out. Boom. Boom. And we're, I was going to say we're live, but we're not live because it's a podcast, but I am live on Facebook. Um, so if you listen to my podcast and you'd like to see me record it live, every night I record it sometime around, I don't know, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, I do a live stream while I do my podcast. Thank you for joining Spazzing Out. I am the host, Anthony Spaz Paziali, whatever you call me, Ant Spaz, dickhead, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, I had started the podcast originally because I'd like to give my weird twist on things in life. And then the second I started the podcast, the stink of life set in, which is <laughs> anything that I do turns to crap. So the coronavirus hits, and that's all I have to talk about is the coronavirus. So we'll talk about the coronavirus. And aha, one thing we will get to tonight, or I will get to uh, today, because whenever you listen to this, probably the morning, that we're going to talk about is how I was right, 100% right, that the banana is the number one way you're going to get the virus. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Everybody's been giving me crap for being out. Everybody's saying you shouldn't be working. Everybody's saying I need to stay home. And I'm telling everybody else that if you're going to the grocery store, you're going to get it before I get it from working. We'll talk about that and what the CDC and what the White House is now suggesting is the number one place that you are most likely to get the virus. Um, other things that we're going to talk about on here is uh, something that I truly believe, I, I was talking about this beforehand, food bank lines, um, people who are getting coronavirus can get it again. I think we already knew that, but they're starting, some people are starting to get it again. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about what Fuji or Fauci has to say about the virus being year round, like, or you know, kind of like the flu, it's gonna come back uh, more often than not, we're going to talk about a dude who works at the Dollar Tree and social distancing with that and how they got into a little beef. Um, let me flip back to this other screen so you guys can see, you know, well, you can't really see it on Facebook Live, but um, I have my notes right here. Okay. This week is the week. <laughs> This is the peak week in the United States. This is when everything is expected to double, triple, quadruple. And if there was going to be a time that you were going to stay home and not go out, this week is the week. They're asking you to stay home this week. They're begging you. The government's begging you to stay home this week. But there's one thing they really don't want you to do, and it's what I've been saying the whole time with this social distancing thing. The White House, the Coronavirus Task Force, is warning people that for the next two weeks, this would be the perfect time and the most important and extreme time to, quote, this is the moment to not be going to the grocery store and not going to the pharmacy. So, I was right again. 
the grocery store is where you are most likely to get it. They want you to stock up on all your food, which is going to cause a panic. People are going to run to the grocery store right now. But I didn't need the government to tell me that because I can think for myself. Most of you boobs can't. Most of you people need the government to come in and say, well, you know, if you touch something somebody else touched, you might get the coronavirus. Well, I'm not a moron. I can figure shit out for myself. I don't need to be told by the government what's right and what's wrong. Government doesn't have to say, hey, you know, the, the stove is hot, so don't touch it. Nope. I get it. I can see that the stove is on. I'm not going to touch it. Thanks, Dad. I don't need that shit. I've been saying from the get-go that you are most likely to get the virus from the grocery store because that stuff has been touched a bunch of times. You go into the store. Well, you know what? It, it, it's not, not only the grocery store, it's just the store in general. Here, I have a bottle of Captain Morgan's. Uh, the, 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 the virus is all over the bottle. All over it. I went into the liquor store, looked at Captain Morgan. He's like, oh, do I want Captain Morgan's white? Looks at it, flips it over, says, nah, I don't want Captain Morgan's white. Puts it back. Another guy comes in, oh, I want Captain Morgan's white. Nah, I don't want Captain Morgan's white. It's touched by hundreds of people. So to everyone who is giving me crap about being out and my social distancing habits, I say to you, if you have left your property, have left your house and gone to the grocery store, you have put your family in danger more than I have. As a matter of fact, I at least went out and made money. You went out and you spent money. Not me. I made it. And I try to avoid people the best I can. Sometimes I'm in situations where I can't. So there you have it. White House is suggesting that over the next two weeks, the peak weeks here in the United States, that we don't go food shopping, that we don't go to grocery stores, that we don't go to the pharmacy, we don't go to gas stations, we we don't go to stores. That's where you're going to get it. Now, the CDC has officially said that everybody should be wearing some kind of a mask in public. Everyone. Something they did not promote from the get-go, which is garbage, because we don't want to be lied to by the government. We'd like to be told the truth. But again, I don't need the government to think for me. We all knew that masks would help us. We all knew that a mask would protect us. We didn't need the government to say, hey, masks are going to keep you guys safe. If you have a, somewhat of a brain in your head, you would already know that a mask would help. It's simple. I've, I've known that my entire life. I work in an industry where there's a lot of dust, and I know that if I wear a mask, less dust gets into my lungs. If I don't wear a mask, I can't fucking breathe. I don't need the government to tell me that. I already know it. So, it's like, if you drink booze, you're going to get drunk. Like, there's a label on, on, on the fucking bottle that tells you, hey, you're going to get loaded if you drink this and you shouldn't drive. I don't need to be told that. I already know. God, the government should just be embarrassed of themselves. These people should just, the CDC, and oh, no, not the CDC, man. People in general, you should just be embarrassed. If you, one, didn't realize that the most likely place you were going to get it was at a store. You should know that right from the get-go. That's where you're getting it. Store, gas station, places like that. And two, if you didn't know that wearing a mask out in public would help you from getting sick, not just the coronavirus. If you had a mask on and some douchebag coughed, you'd have a better chance of not getting the flu. You should already know that. You shouldn't be told that. You should actually be embarrassed that you don't. Another thing you guys need to be that, that you should be embarrassed about is if you don't think that the economy is going to take a huge toll, you're a moron. And I'm going to give you a couple reasons why. First off, you know what companies are realizing? Shit, we don't need all these employees. We're doing business just fine without these people. So when people get back to work, there's not going to be as many a billable hours for employees as there was back on March 1st before this shit happened. So if you're working somewhere and you were that non-essential dude, you know, the guy that I, I I don't know what the hell you did. You sat in a cubicle all day, your job's gone. They're realizing right now, like, wow, we didn't need half these people. There are going to be so many unemployed people. And when the money dries up from the government, from this so-called bailout that they're giving, uh, 
Americans and small businesses and big businesses, they can only print so much money. They can only print so much. And you're going to be out of a job, plain and simple. The unemployment rate will remain high unless you get off your ass and maybe decide to start your own business and you get self-employed and you figure out a way to make yourself valuable. That's a simple thing in this life. Hard work works. Hard work will beat talent every time talent refuses to work hard. You could be the most talented guy on the planet, but if you don't want to work hard, you're going home and you're going to be unemployed. So there you have it. I was right once again. The grocery store is the place where you're going to get it. You should have been wearing masks from the get-go. We all knew it, but people are like, well, it's only essential workers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you guys are lemmings. Honestly, you have to start thinking for yourself, people, please. I, if you get one thing from my podcast, please understand that you have to think for yourself. And if you don't start thinking for yourself, a lot of people would say that they, uh, listen, I'm, I'm a diehard conservative, but a lot of people believe that I'm a liberal. And the reason that people believe I'm a liberal is because I don't believe that people will make the right choice. People never make the right choice, which is why the government has to tell you what to do and how to do it and make decisions for you because you people don't know how to make decisions for yourselves. It's a shame. I can make decisions for myself, but my life is affected by the boobs who don't know how to think and can't work for themselves and can't get off their ass or get out of their way or know that they have to eat less so that they can lose weight or that they got to work out so they have to be healthy or that they shouldn't drink and drive. So the government's got to make rules for the boobs. And there are more boobs than there are not. There's a ton of boobs. So that's why we have rules like that. And I support it. it sucks. But. I, I need to protect myself against you idiots. I need to, when I'm on the road, I need someone else. I need the government to be like, no texting. You shouldn't even need to be told that. Fuck. Honestly, ah, it gets me so mad. Um, Jaina said, you're not CDC. I, 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 that's, I don't care if I'm CDC or not. I just, plain and simple, I don't need to be the CDC. I'm Anthony Paziali here. Yeah. I, I, self bonus doctor right here. Um, I don't ever get sick. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, if I get the coronavirus, I'm going to get really sick because the coronavirus is one of those diseases. If it gets into your lungs, it's going to cause that. Um, yeah, here I go being a doctor, but that acute respiratory fucking problem, you know, basically what it does is it gets in your lungs and it, and it puts, you know, like a layer of shit to keep the oxygen from getting, um, to your red blood cells. And then you're like, you, you asphyxiate yourself. You, 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 your organs, they die. So asymptomatic people, right? So I would consider myself an asymptomatic person. I get the flu, but I don't show symptoms. Well, if I get the coronavirus, it's going to be, it, it's, it could be devastating for somebody like myself. Cause I'm not going to show any symptoms of the virus, but my lungs are still going to get fucked up. It's a very dangerous disease. You guys should literally, uh, I just read a great article about it on the New York Times, um, and they have a great video of how it will attack. Um, I posted it on my Facebook. You have to check it out. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty compelling, and it's, it's, it's pretty scary because I am out there working, meeting with people, but again, you're more likely to get it at the grocery store than I am to be out working. I didn't even come in contact with anybody today. I worked at three different job sites. One was a construction site outside. There was nobody there. The other place I was working underneath a deck and the other place was a curbside pickup. I'm doing coronavirus curbside pickups so that I'm not getting near people. And anytime people are there, I'm six feet away. I practice the six feet away, especially after watching this video as a how it attacks your lungs. It's, it's crazy. All right, I need to stop. I need to, one, I need to stop because I need to have a beverage here. I, I, I'm drinking. Uh, I'm going to become a full-fledged alcoholic beca because of the coronavirus. And it's not even because of the coronavirus. It's just, what else do you do when you're stuck in your basement when you're in quarantine? You drink. All right. Here's why I implore you. And for the people who are on Facebook, all five of you, uh, please 
subscribe to my podcast. Uh, you can get it on Apple Podcasts. You can get it on Google Podcasts. You can get it on Spotify. Now, look, I don't care if you actually listen to the podcast because it probably sucks. Honestly, I wouldn't listen to it myself either. What I would like you to do, though, is subscribe and leave a comment, something nice. That would be great. You know, if you could BS and leave me like five stars. But if you could get through it, through the commercial, I could get paid. I make one cent, one, one, one cent for every time, for every download. Please. Well, you don't actually have to download it. You just have to make it through the commercial. So make it through this commercial. You don't even have to listen to it. I don't care. I just want to get paid for it. I've made like 11 bucks, man. I'm on fire. This podcast is booming. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back. We have some other coronavirus stuff that we need to talk about on the other side of this commercial. You going to come on? Kaylee's here, guys. You guys, you just can't see her. She doesn't want to come near me. She's staying six feet away. But I understand. <clears throat> yeah, give me a sec, guys. I want to. I haven't got the comments. Uh, Phil, if you wear a mask or glove, then you're then you're good. Honestly, Phil, if you wear a mask or glove, you're not good because if the virus gets on your mask or glove and then you touch it with your hands, that's straight up common sense. You got to find a way to take the mask off and the gloves off without fucking touching them. I don't know how that's possible. Uh, Ryan says, Kaylee, Saint. yep, I'm pretty fucked up tonight. I made the drinks, not Jaina. Is that Jaina? Is that how you say that? Uh, Ted, I did talk to your wife. She booked for tomorrow. Um, hold on. Yeah, James. Uh, Jana. Yeah, James, we're not keeping the ice people employed because a devastating, uh, there's no ice in the house. I'm pretty pissed off about it because I would like to keep the ice people employed, but I don't have any ice. Uh, but people touched trash too, bro. Uh, coronavirus made in China. Right, New podcast, Dr. Spaz. Bro, we all had it last fall. Only 3% of the population is capable of critical thinking. Yeah, James, I agree with you on that. The rest rely on mob mentality. Yep, the economy is already fucked. Jeremy, you know I agree with you. Boop, boop, boop. Yep, the boop, boop, boop people. Uh, Spaz, where is Kaylee? Spaz, is Kaylee? Wait, where is Kaylee? Spaz is venting. Uh, Tony for president. Um, chicken palm down CSP. I'm cooking, baby. Uh, the knowledge you have spoken the last three weeks proves you were faking it. Yeah, bro, come on. It, Alex. Come on. Not a fucking boob. Uh, Marty at Stop and Shop. <laughs> I don't know if that's a reference to something people don't know, but if it is, hilarious. If you don't know what I'm talking about, but you, but you might feel. Uh, did you know China is buying up companies? Mm, uh, chicken palm. Uh, let them have it. Twenty. Bah, 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 bah. All right. There's a lot on. It. Back to the podcast because I want to finish this shit. Okay. There were a couple other things that we got to get. I need to look these things up real quick. Ah, grocery store, wear masks, Italy, university, Bill Gates. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fauci. Uh, federal government will pay hospitals for treating uninsured persons. It costs the money. Coronavirus is just so many people. All right, here we go. And we're going back. All right. Thank you for taking the time to make sure uh, my family is taken care, care, cared, care of um, by listening to that commercial and generating one cent for me, which I will not be casting that money. Casting. Man, I'm telling you, I must have had, I must have got hit in the face or like my mom must have dropped me as a child. I can barely talk. Um, 
I won't be cashing out until I make at least 100 bucks. so it's going to be a pretty long time before I get to that. Um, keeping the Captain Morgans people employed, keeping Solo Cup employed, Ginger Ale people, and the Ice Cube people. I have a little bit of ice left. It is a huge, huge problem at my house right now. There is no ice, and there's nothing worse. Honestly, what's worse than drinking an al alcoholic beverage that's cold? Now, if you're drinking something neat, which I like to, if I'm drinking whiskey, I like to drink my whiskey neat. Um, if I'm drinking tequila, I like it in a shot, so I like it warm. But if I'm drinking a bevy that's a mixed drink and I don't have any ice, that's a problem. Huge problem. And I like to chew the ice while I eat it. I don't know if you guys like to do that, but I like to chew the ice while I drink. So I, it's tough. I'm trying not to chew. chew, chew, chew chew the ice so that I can have another one. Um, but it's not really working out for me. Um, I wish I could get a Captain Morgan sponsor. I would be pretty good at that. I, uh, uh, my podcast is brought to you by the captain, Captain Morgan's Caribbean white rum. The shit's mad good. You should drink it. That would be my, that would be my sponsor. And I'll be like, ah, drink the captain. Get fucking, you get fucked up while you're doing your podcast. Mix it with some ginger ale and some ice, you fucking scurvy. Nah, I love rum. Rum's good shit. All right. Back to more serious stuff here on the podcast. So, uh, the government continues to overspend and spend a ridiculous amount of money. The feel in Washington is there's no amount of money they can't throw at this problem. They're now throwing $2.2 trillion uh, to hospitals to treat uninsured patients with coronavirus. So there are a ton of people in this country that don't have health insurance, even more now that uh, are have been unemployed. So what, what you don't understand is... Um, what you don't understand is that the, uh, people who are getting fired, they, they, they don't get to keep their health insurance. They get, um, what the fuck's I going to say? Uh, they get bumped off their health insurance, but they can buy Cobra, but they can't afford it. So, so the white house has said, boom, we're going to throw $2 trillion to the healthcare industry to cover people who are uninsured with the coronavirus. I'm guessing that includes illegal immigrants. They don't have health insurance. Um, I, I don't know how people feel about that. I, I, I would think at this point in time, a life is a life is a life. Uh, if someone is an illegal immigrant and they have the damn virus, I, we should probably treat them. I really don't want to get into an argument about whether or not these people should be deported or not because they're stealing American jobs. I'd quite frankly say to you that whether they should be here or not, they're not stealing jobs from anybody because lazy ass Americans can do the work that they're doing. Most Americans are lazy fucks. So, you know, do you want to clean toilets? You want to dig ditches? Do you want to do demo? No. So, there's probably a need for that labor force because they're doing the jobs that we don't want to do. But I'm here nor there on whether or not they should be here. We can worry about that shit when we don't have the coronavirus uh, kicking around. My, my opinion would be that, well, let me sum up what my opinion is. You should come here legally. You should do what everybody else had to do, what my father had to do. He came here legally. His father came here legally. He had to prove that he had... You know, you had to have some kind of a skill and you had to be employable and you had to assimilate into the country. You had to learn American and you had to be able to work and provide for yourself. So, yes, should you have to do that to get into this country? Absolutely. This is nothing to do. My, my rant here has nothing to do with whether illegal immigrants, uh, whether the illegal should be deported or not. And everything to do with the fact that they are humans. They are human beings. And in this coronavirus situation, I would say we need to help these people out if they are sick. The problem is, who the fuck is going to pay for it? Because the government continues to just print money 
and throw it at this fucking problem. And quite like Jaws, it's we're not going to know how bad the economy is going to be and how fucked we're going to be and how inflated the dollar bill is going to be until it fucking swims up and bite us in our ass sometime in October, right before the election. So, it, kudos to that. I don't, I honestly, the, here's what's crazy. The government's not going to have any money coming in. Everybody's home unemployed. So where the fuck are they getting their revenue from that they're printing this money for? You pe- People should be scared to fuck about what's going to happen with the economy and less scared about uh, the coronavirus unless you, unless you get the coronavirus. Uh, someone just requested a job for Friday at 12 p.m. Hold on. Ooh, this is take junk stuff. One sec. I want to check that out. You know, I'm keeping the economy rolling right here. I'm still buying goods and services and people are paying taxes off that money. So maybe that's where the revenue is coming from. But we're going to be short on loot pretty soon. And if people don't stop panicking about that, the the economic toll that's going to happen here is going to be 10 times worse than uh, what's going to happen with the coronavirus. So hold on, guys. I want to just see this while that, uh, while that, I know right in the middle of my podcast, I, I, someone wants to book a job. I just want to see what, who and when and where, uh, McCabe and Salem mass. So we'll have to reach out to George McCabe, uh, a little bit later. Hold on guys. I know this is riveting content while I uh, do my live. I mean, uh, I use this uh, system called house call pro. It's phenomenal. If you are in the service industry like I am, I recommend using House Call Pro. It's a it's a phenomenal app. Okay. Enough about the loot. At some point, we're going to run out of money, and that's going to be a that's going to be a major problem. Um, now, Anthony Fauci or Fucci is saying that the coronavirus is going to become an, a, a seasonal occurrence. It's going to be just like the flu. Uh, but in the future, we'll have we'll be better prepared for it. Meaning, we'll have vaccines and we'll have vaccinations. But if you get the virus, it's bad. It could be a hundred percent terminal for you if it gets into your lungs. It can you have you've got to check out the New York Times article on the progression of the coronavirus. Uh, one being mild one being deadly and they go into the deadly side of it and how it affects your lungs and how basically it suffocates you. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty gruesome. And you could go from showing no symptoms over the first few days to showing symptoms. I, I, I mean, literally the, the first five days you might not have any symptoms and then all of a sudden you're fucking dead. It's, it's pretty gruesome now because I can think for myself I understand that the what I'm talking about, the gruesome part where people might die, is less of a chance than you getting it and it going away. That's like the dramatic end. That's the dramatic end. So like, for example, 300,000 people in the United States have the coronavirus, 10,000 have died. So it's, I mean, I, I got to do, I got to do the fucking math on this. It, uh, 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 300,000 times 0.02. Uh, all right, it's a little more than 2%. So a little more than 2% of the people that get the coronavirus uh, have died from it, at least here in the United States. So, yes, that's the dramatic end, that if you get it, it will get into your lungs and it will basically suffocate you. That is dramatic. But it could happen, so it is kind of scary, and you should protect yourself. We'll move on from that because, you know, I'm a little smarter than that where they're, the New York Times is writing the article to really scare the shit out of people. And it scares me. When I read it, I was like, oof, this is bad because it, it can affect anybody. Not, you know, what most of the people who are passing away from it have an underlining an underlying health issue or they're elderly, but this thing could hit a 30 year old. And if it gets into that 30 year old's lungs um, and uh, it's God, please. I hope nothing like that happens. 
I ain't even trying to be all crying or all upset with people or emotional. I just want to drink my captains, but be smart about it. If you're out in public, stay away from people, but be more intelligent about the fact that, yes, you have a mask on and, yes, you have gloves, but your gloves touched whatever, you know, the, the bottle or the banana and your mask got the, got the virus on it. So you should take your mask off first, but how are you going to get your gloves off without touching them? Just think about that. How's that possible? All right. That's, uh, oh, there was one other thing that I really wanted to talk to you guys about, but you know what? Like, you know what I want to talk about? Something that was bothering the hell out of me. We'll move on from the coronavirus. I want to talk about food really quick. First off, Miss Annie made, uh, my mother-in-law, she made American chop suey and it's been sitting over there since I've been recording the podcast and I can't wait to eat it. But I'd like to talk about pizza for a second. And my one of my biggest pet peeves with pizza, and my neighbors ordered pizza uh, just yesterday, and I, I didn't have any because they didn't order cheese. Now, I do like other types of pizza besides cheese. I, I like a veggie pizza. I, I can have a meatball pizza or meat lovers or something. I can have stuff on my, my pizza, but I don't. I, I prefer cheese pizza. I will always order cheese pizza. And I will put it to you this way. If you don't order cheese pizza, it's going to be dramatic. You're a fucking asshole. Anybody that goes to a pizza place and eats with other people and orders anything other than a cheese pizza is a straight up dick and they don't give a shit about you. Plain and simple. This is why. First off, if you guys have decided, well, there's a couple ways here. First, if you've decided that you guys are just going to have pizza, and you want cheese pizza, but this douchebag has decided they're going to get a veggie or they're going to get a meat lovers and you don't like meat or you don't like veggie, you need to make it clear to them right from the get-go. I do not like meat pizza or veggie pizza. Therefore, I'm going to eat this whole cheese pizza. You cannot have a fucking slice of my pizza. Make that clear. Why do you make it clear? Because no one ever eats the entire pizza. That is the chicken pizza. No one eats the whole thing. The pineapple pizza. No one eats the whole thing. The meat pizza. Nobody eats the whole thing. They never finish that pizza. But you know what they always do? They always grab a slice of the cheese. You've lost your right to the cheese. You have no right to cheese pizza when you've ordered another pizza. I have ordered cheese pizza. The cheese pizza is mine. It is not yours. No, you cannot have a slice. And you have offended me by ordering anything other than cheese and think that you can have a slice of my fucking pizza. It drives me bonkers. Bonkers. And the, the other thing is, if you're having a pizza party, say it's your kid's birthday party or you're at Chuck E. Cheese, um, any, just any place at work, lunch, like if you're having lunch and you're buying pizzas for the crew, buy cheese. Every single one of the pizzas, buy cheese. And you might say, Anthony Paziali, why? Why would I just buy cheese? Because there'll be no pizza left over. It's, it's like the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. You have work pizza and they buy the veggie, they buy the chicken, they buy the pineapple one, they buy the lovers one, they buy some fucking... No one like one that just looks retarded, weird. You look at it, and it's like, ah, oh, who the fuck is gonna touch that? And then they buy like one cheese pizza, maybe even two, and those things get gobbled up real quick. And then you got all these leftovers. And that first off, if you're the business owner, I'd be bullshit because that stuff's gonna get thrown out because no one's eating it. But if you got all cheese, everybody eats cheese pizza. Everyone. If you like pizza, you eat cheese pizza. You may prefer some toppings on it, but if there is no available toppings to be had on your pizza, you will eat cheese. Try to tell me I'm wrong. Please, for the love of God, Anthony at TakeJunk.com is my email. Get me on Instagram at SpazWAF. Get me on Twitter at SpazWAF. Get me on my TikTok at Anthony Paz. Prove me wrong that if you only bought cheese pizza, that it wouldn't all get eaten. I'd love to hear your theory on that. Prove me wrong. Now, we'll take this one step further. Um, it, 
it's this really burns me. You just it just to the core. You decide to go out to eat and you go to a place that has pizza. And whoever you're with decides they're not and you say, Hey, I'm gonna get a cheese pizza. And the other person's like, Yeah, all right, cool. I'm gonna get chicken fingers and fries. Or they're, you know, I'm gonna and nah, I'm gonna get pasta. And then I make it clear. Because I don't f around with my food. I make it I say, okay, you're gonna get chicken fingers, right? And fries. Well, I'm gonna get a pizza. And I plan on eating the whole thing. All of it. You can't have a slice. I'm gonna eat the whole thing. If you would want some pizza, I will order two. I will order two fucking pizzas if you would like to have a slice of pizza along with your chicken fingers and fries or along with your pasta or along with your chicken salad or whatever the fuck you ordered. But know this, the pizza's mine and you can't have a slice. People think that the pizza's a community. That's a, that's the problem. Everybody thinks when you get a pizza, it's, it's fucking community. They think, oh, eight slices, anybody can have one. Wrong! You can't. When I order pizza, you can't have a slice. Don't ask me. I should have a shirt that says, that says, don't touch my fucking pizza. Period. So, it always happens. You get the pizza. This douchebag gets whatever they want. And then, the one, they might not like it. Maybe they eat half of it. And then they grease all over your pizza. Like, oh, let me get a slice of cheese. And, of course, you say, yeah. But now you're pissed because they just say you pizza. You look at them and you go, fuck, I told you. I said... I would order a whole nother pizza. So here's what you've learned today. You've learned that you need to think for yourself. We didn't need the government to tell us that we need masks, that we need to wear them. We should have known it. We didn't need the government to tell us that the grocery store is the number one place you're going to get the disease. You should have already known it. And now you've learned that if you're going to order a pizza, you order a fucking cheese pizza. And if you order something other than pizza, you have lost your privilege to eat pizza. Simple. You go to the restaurant with someone. They order pizza. You order something different. You get nothing. Nada. Fuck off. If you get pizza and you get a pizza with a topping on it, you have lost your cheese cheese pizza privilege. You bought the shit pizza, you eat the shit pizza, don't touch my pizza. Now, if you order cheese, everybody's happy, everybody eats, the whole pizza goes away, boom, done. You've now been educated on the importance of getting cheese pizza. Birthday parties, kids eat cheese. Work parties, everybody eats the cheese. Everyone eats cheese pizza. Oh, as you can tell, that really pisses me off. Just, I, I don't understand I, I, why you would, in mixed company, order anything other than a cheese pizza. Plain and simple. And if you're going to buy something else other than pizza, you don't, it's not community pizza. By no means. It, it's not, you know, unless you have that conversation, you say, hey, we're going to split the pizza. That's a different story. But in general, cheese pizza is the way to go. And now you're educated on it. All right. I think that's it for tonight. I'm pissed. I got no ice left. My my my, my shit melted. So now I'm drinking warm Captain Morgan's and ginger ale. Tastes like crap. Um... Man, I can't even think now. I'm so pissed off. And the pizza thing really pisses. It fucking burns me. So many times in my life, I've had people eat the pizza. And I just, I want to like, I want to rip their fucking face off. Gets me so mad. All right. Thank you for listening to Spazzing Out. Um, Like I said before, I doubt you made it to the end of my podcast. So this is more for the people who are watching me live right now. Subscribe to my podcast, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify. Like it. Hook me up with some stars. Write something nice. I do not care if you listen to it. But just play it in the background so that I can get paid for it. I made like 11 bucks. I'd like to get the 12 bucks so that I can buy myself a cheese pizza and no one else can fucking touch it but me. Get what I'm saying? All right. Thank you. We'll be back tomorrow. For those of you that are listening to my podcast and made it through it, 
I do my podcast live on Facebook every night. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the podcast gets played or gets aired or distributes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 5 a.m. so that you can listen to it on your way to work. But wait, nobody fucking works. So download it when you get a chance, when you're sitting at home and your wife is bitching at you because you're a lazy fuck and you haven't done anything all day. And you could say, hey, hun, I'm listening to Spaz. Leave me the fuck alone and go get me a cheese pizza. All right, bye. All right, there you have it. Let me uh, go back. Uh, Give me one sec, guys. I I wanna try to answer some of your comments. Three slash six segment two. Let me add that sponsor. All right. Here we go. Spit on it. Buy me a pizza. I'll give you a t-shirt. Um, cuts, you covered, Spaz. Hold on. Dude, I just want to eat my, my, my fucking food. Um, do they share the fries? No, Phil. No, they share the fries, man. They're scumbags. Blue raspberry vodka. Nice. Thank you, Karen. Spaz learned to share. Uh, yeah. You, uh, <clears throat> pizza. A, 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 I can't even say the word. 101. Pretty good. Uh, can I have a slice? my lodge drink at home you yeah, dude you gotta get your wife to work man come on fine poor spaz yeah i'm pretty pissed off i want to drive a truck again tomorrow for another birthday parade for me oh man that's terrible uh buy me a pie eat it bro 5g towers yeah i gotta figure out the thing about the 5g towers i'll look into that maybe i'll talk about it tomorrow night um behind the scenes that take chunk you're a good man. Thanks, bro. Socialized, uh, medical. Yo, Spaz, saw you in Lowell today. Yeah, hollering. I was definitely in Lowell. Uh, you are a boob with shirts. Yep, that is true. No cans today. Just landscaping. That's cool. Jaina, uh, there she is. Uh, right. Okay, I got them all. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging. I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. I'll try, I try to do it sometime at the 7 o'clock hour. Peace out. Bye.